a baby Fahurie and blessings to the ancestors. It's the short here to do a response video to Dr. Jared Ball, who I followed for several years from his work involving the Malcolm X assassination and his critiques of black capitalism. The purpose of making this video is to respond to his recent ongoing critiques regarding the economic solutions related to black capitalism or the advocacy of black business, but more specifically, the issue I have with him constantly criticizing proposed solution without offering his own concrete alternative solution those of which he does provide isn't without flaws as I will explain later. In addition, I want to respond to the recent shade Dr. Ball took at the Cooperative Structure Solution, which is what the organization I'm building called the Original People's Party advocates for as part of its agenda. To start off, let's address the areas of agreement I have with Dr. Ball. I agree with him on a macro level. Black people practicing capitalism in the form of entrepreneurship such as small businesses, or investing, like investing into the stock market, is not a collective solution to our problems as a people. This is due to the structural nature of capitalism that is based on the means and ownership of businesses and production that naturally flows into the hands of a small minority, whether it's a family business or corporate stockholders, who will ultimately control the equity and profits generated. In contrast to the labor or workforce whose productivity creates the goods and services, thus the profits and overall value created. This includes recent technology since the advent of the Industrial Revolution that traditional capitalist entities are able to afford using the profits generated by labor or government support to invest into machines and automation to replace workers' labor to save costs in order to compete within the capitalist marketplace. In sum, this creates the modern-day employer-employee relationship, which in the past we called slave and slave master. The reason why I bring up this overall critique of black capitalism is because this is the general line of attack that Dr. Ball consistently articulates, which I agree with, but later will articulate the areas of thought I disagree with. This critique is also tied into Dr. Ball's ongoing contempt for the work of elder scholars such as Dr. Amos Wilson's Blueprint for Black Power or more directly dismissive of the work of Dr. Claude Anderson's Powernomics. For those who are not familiar with those books, they are highly regarded as one of the best solution-oriented books for black African people to organize and pursue economic and political development, which I highly recommend you guys read yourselves. In Dr. Ball's critiques of their work, he criticizes not only the capitalist references in both books, but also the myth of black buying power, both of which, as Dr. Anderson and Dr. Wilson has argued for to varying degrees, which Dr. Ball accurately breaks down in his own book with the same title. The area of disagreement I have with Dr. Ball is his dismissive rhetoric of not only these elders' works, and more specifically, the ideas that both the blueprint of black power and powernomics put forth in their text to promote collective development of our people. Dr. Ball continues this dismissive rhetoric against economics in a recent video using W.E. Du Bois as an argument against one of the few viable economic alternatives to a capitalist structure, which is called cooperatives, in the following video. Du Bois, even in his criticism of electoral politics here in the United States, says, listen, cooperatives, collectives, I tried them, they don't work. And you're going to hear in his own words what he says is needed and why it doesn't work. But the short of it is, of course, is that we need socialism and all of these other band-aids and stop gaps are just that. Uh, and for my own argument, the problem becomes when those stop gaps and band-aids are elevated to revolutionary consciousness and political activity. That's where I think we are now. So let's just take a quick listen to, to Du Bois in his own words. And I think it's, it's as plain as day and why I wanted to bring it to our platform. And as I've said, unfortunately, about the work of Dr. Jessica gordon uh and others, uh, Dr. Amos Wilson and others who isolate that moment in the 30s and 40s where Du Bois, as he talked about there, flirted with the idea of cooperatives, they don't come back to acknowledge, as Du Bois did by 1960, having finally listened to the workers and others around him, that that doesn't work. And if you really want to appease, or if you really want to appease radical notions and revolutionary notions of redistribution, you have to have full state involvement, programmed scientific redistribution or socialism. So 
This video is emblematic of the overall issue I have with Dr. Ball. It is one thing to criticize capitalism in general, which he has valid points, but by dismissing the potential role of cooperatives as an alternative to organized labor in the formation of businesses is where I draw the line with his lines of attacks. In addition, the subtle shot that he takes at not only Dr. Wilson, but also Jessica Nemhar's work called Collective Courage, which documents cooperatives. Cooperatives has been proven as a successful alternative model at the micro level in various regions where it has been applied to solve the inequality that capitalist organized entities exhibit typically by having democratic processes for workers to become member owners, electing management, and equitable distribution of gross profits that they help produce and generate. To further make my point, in Claudia Bajo's Capital and the Debt Trap, she exemplifies the productive roles that cooperatives can potentially play in the following excerpts. In the first excerpt referring to its sustainability, a governmental survey found the rate of survival of cooperatives after three years was 75%, whereas it was only 48% for all enterprises put together, and that after 10 years, 44% of cooperatives were still in operations, whereas the rate was only 20% for all enterprises. She also references the resiliency of cooperatives in Europe relating to the 2008 financial crisis. Industrial and service cooperatives have been unequally affected. Even in the most affected, they generally manage to resist better than other enterprises by resorting to special measures decided by their worker members, such as the non-distribution of annual surpluses or profits, reduction, or in extreme cases, even temporary suspension of wages. Now, in reference to Du Bois' quote that was featured in Dr. Ball's video, those of us who are involved in this political space understand that ultimately, government policy is necessary for a cooperative system to sustain itself. This will lead into my ultimate critique of Dr. Ball's own solutions, to which its flaws will be shown shortly. To conclude this section, at present times, I do not believe that the contradictions of practicing black capitalism or promoting black business doesn't negate the need for our people to become engaged in commerce. As I will explain in future videos, the need to develop our own economic systems, which I advocate through the OPP's cooperative concept, is imperative for us to meet the material demands and expectations of our constituencies. If we do not build our own supply chains or various forms of currency exchanges through the lowest levels of securing basic raw materials to the end process of manufacturing to produce common everyday household goods or in addition to life-saving medical care, the black African audiences that are listening to our respective messages as nationalists, pan-Africanists, or those of you who call yourselves socialists or Marxists, will not be able to perceive a realistic alternative that they can buy into or see the effort to organize around. Political organizing will not be enough. Dr. Ball's prescribed solution is a mix of advocating for grassroots organizing to change public policy. In other words, meaning you have to become active at the political level where you will be able to attempt to change the system at the legislative or political level through the vote, which is the primary way to affect public policy. In order to do this, you must have either elected officials at various levels of government at the local and the national level. This is where we run into problems with Dr. Ball's solution. To run candidates or to even mobilize locally to amend or advocate for changes in laws, substantial amounts of capital is required for you to run campaigns to get into elected office to wield power or at the low end to organize grassroots lobbying efforts to affect political change. This includes a multitude of items required for you to run a campaign such as transportation to campaign, funds to run ads on the corporate elite controlled media in order to promote your campaign agenda to sway public opinion to attract voters to the voting booths. The problem with this approach is that the entrenched capitalist system that controls the levels of power from capital to media has the ability to squash or circumvent political change by donating or propping up establishment candidates that will serve their interests. While this has been an ongoing issue, in the last decade most recently, cases such as Citizen United, which recognize corporations as having the similar rights as an American citizen, allow them to donate and contribute to political campaigns at much larger rates, which further skews the prospect of any actual grassroots political organizing to affect public policies that would inevitably affect the white power structure's interests. 
An example of this can be seen most recently in the 2020 U.S. elections, where the upsurge of leftist grassroots policies was largely squashed by the neoliberal establishment, and most recently in a localized example of how the dark money swung public opinion in the congressional campaign of Nina Turner in Ohio in 2022. As a brief side note, I want to bring back Dr. Ball's critiques of powernomics and blueprint for black power in relation to his political solution, because all of which I just mentioned has been proposed by Dr. Wilson and Dr. Anderson in their works. Both elders have argued to varying aspects that the importance of political organizing. However, the contrasting view of them and Dr. Ball is that both of them have stated that the need to organize first economically via business or commerce to accumulate the discretionary capital needed to contribute to political campaigns or lobbying efforts for a political agenda. I can attest to this point, having read both books several times over and their lectures in addition, that Dr. Anderson and Dr. Wilson have never argued against the need for grassroots political organizing. I will include quotes and citations for you to read it yourself in the description to avoid making this video too long. Now in conclusion to this response video, I want to emphasize that there is no quote unquote the solution to address the collective situation of black African peoples. In my efforts to provide a solution with the OPP agenda, I do not attempt to suggest that our plans for development is the solution, nor do I advocate for dogmatic approaches to others' proposals for solutions. If black capitalism in the form of becoming your own boss or investor enables you to escape the wage labor and secure a bigger slice of the pie if you are successful, then do so to address the immediate needs and prospects of your family. I would argue for cooperatives as a better equitable solution, but you can do as you see fit. But more broadly, in regards to Dr. Ball as a leader, I take issue with his constant criticism of black business or economics as if his own solutions are supposed to be perfect. These ideas that we come up with are likely going to be imperfect as I demonstrated with the issues of capitalism in general and Dr. Ball's own prescribed solutions. I would suggest in conclusion. We steer clear of dogmatic ideological approaches to our solutions to our problems as black people because the obstacles presented by the Western power structure are complex and will not be solved by a one shoes fits all approach. We need black owned businesses in whichever form it takes shape in, just as we need political organizing and political education to educate the consciousness of our people to create a better future. To wrap up, if you guys are interested in OPP, the link is in the description to read up on our development plan and join. Also, if you're a fan of Boom Bat Beats, I've got a couple of beat drops coming soon on streaming services. Links in the description as well. Until next time, Abibi Fahudie and blessings to the ancestors.